In this video, Rob and I talk about our favorite SEO tools. My name is Doug Cunnington. I'm the founder of Niche Site Project. I talk about internet marketing, Amazon affiliate sites, and project management. So if you're new to the channel, have a look around, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. Let's get to the video. What's up, Rob? How you doing today? Doing good. How you doing, Doug? Doing awesome. And today we're going to talk about SEO tools, sort of our favorite SEO tools. We do get that question all the time. There are so many of them out there. So I guess, Rob, I'm just going to ask you straight up, what's your favorite tool if you had to point just one out? Hands down, Ahrefs. Okay. What do you use Ahrefs for? You can use it for you know checking backlink profiles and stuff like that. I think within that space, it's the best tool. If you guys are familiar with Moz and Open Site Explorer, I think that's a piece of garbage. And I can't understand why our industry still references that. So their metric of like domain rating, domain authority, based on all the links going to a website, I think is the most accurate, which then flips onto the other side is recently in the last like year or so done a really good job at keyword research. So if you have it, there's a keyword research tab on Ahrefs, you type in a keyword and it's actually going to show you like the top 10. It's going to show you the DR, which is their domain rating, the URL specific rating. It also shows you the top keyword in the search volume that page is ranking for. And within that, you can take, say, the number one result and you can open that up and see all the other keywords in relative position to where it's ranking. So SEMrush is another one that I used to like, but I feel like Ahrefs just with the backlinking and then combined with that, it's just the ultimate tool to me. Yep. Cool. I think from a like a backlink perspective, for sure, Ahrefs is hands down the best. And, you know, Majestic maybe is a close second, but I don't, you know, like the interface as much and the extension of the functionality, like you just mentioned for keyword research. You know, Majestic just doesn't have it. And I agree 100% with the, the Moz point. I mean, the backlink checker for Moz is just, it's yeah. pretty poor. It, it gets just a fraction of the internet. So they've kind of failed to evolve over the past, say, three, four years or so. For Ahrefs, I have to totally agree on like the new functionality, especially what you described where now it's essentially mimicking what we used to get from SEMrush. So that's like fantastic. Now, and I'll point out like SEMrush is probably the tool that I'm using most often right now with a close second being Ahrefs for the reasons you mentioned. So it depends if I'm doing like more sort of like keyword and competition analysis. If so, I'm looking at at SEMrush probably, but if I'm doing more backlink stuff, then Ahrefs, I mean, that is the go-to spot. Now, I will will say uh, another tool that I really enjoy is Keywords Everywhere, and that's a free extension. So people can, can check that out. I'll put a link in the description. Basically, that will show the, I guess it's like the keyword search volume and a couple other little pieces of information in like the Google results page. It'll do it in a couple other tools as well. I, I'm pretty sure it'll do it in, in the Google search console and some other keyword research type tools. So that's pretty helpful just as you're looking at your normal, you know, SERP, you can get a little additional information on the keyword search volume for certain terms. So that's pretty cool. Is keywords everywhere similar to Uber suggest or I've got it all wrong? It is not. So yeah, you've, you have it wrong. <laughs> but I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll show this uh, like a screenshot. But you know, if you search for like a term in the SERPs, and then you see like the little search volume information underneath the field on the search page, like that is I'm sure oh. you've seen it in, in places. And then if you were to scroll down to the bottom Google or yeah, like related searches at the bottom, it'll also show the search volume there. So it's just kind of a convenient thing to have. That sounds nice. I have to check it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And like I said, it's free. So Rob, what do you use for keyword research? Maybe I'll kind of explain my method. I do use Ahrefs. So what I do is, just, let's say you found a niche or you're in a niche, right, currently. You kind of just look at competitors that are ranking, you know, on the first page of Google. So take, you know, best laptop or whatever. That's a hard niche, but take the site that's ranking number one, throw them into Ahrefs, export that into Excel. You can actually sort it by the different pages that they're getting traffic to. And it just shows you this page is getting approximately this much traffic and it ranks for these keywords. So I'm pretty unoriginal in the fact that most of my keyword research is just, I just copy people. Right, like, okay, <laughs> got it. So in, in that said, like, I guess, do you pay attention to the search volume so much or at this point, 
it's not as big of a deal. It depends. So if it's a smaller project, a smaller website, and you're trying to like calculate, I think you should calculate search volumes, try to figure out if I rank here, I can get this traffic, I can make this much money. You should do those projections. If you've grown to a larger site and it's just about scaling content, which is kind of where I'm at with one of my sites, then at this point, I, I don't care really. If it has anything, let's just go for it. <laughs> right. And that's kind of where I come from as well. I mean, if you can get any traffic on it or there's some sign that anyone searching for it ever, then, you know, why not serve that searcher? So now the thing that I'll mention with the keyword search tools, um, I use keyword CAG, by the way, in general, it is usually the most economic option of the paid tool. So most people that ask me what keyword research tool do you use? They also usually throw in, hey, I have zero budget. So yeah. I try, I've try. i tried to find like the cheapest with the decent functionality. Keyword keg seems to be it. All of the keyword search tools, they use like an estimating model, right? They have an algorithm to figure it out. They all use different algorithms, right? They're all proprietary algorithms. So basically when you use different tools, it's likely that you'll get different search volumes. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because if I heard this and understand it correctly, Ahrefs uses like a 30 month like average. So it's pretty, I guess, conservative. I would say the issue that you may run into, right? Is let's say something is trending up like white deep v-neck t-shirts, something like that. <laughs> so let's say something is trending up and there's not 30 months of data on it. You may have sort of like just a false positive or a false negative based on that. You may think, hey, I'm not going to go for that because the search volume is like practically zero because, you know, 24 of the last 30 months have been zero. These t-shirts are just getting big now, you know, so. Wow, look, looks good on you though. No. Yeah. So, so anyway, keep that in mind. I mean, and that's the thing, like the keyword search volumes like matter to an extent. If you're using like the keyword golden ratio, certainly you need to have some stats in there, but it doesn't matter as much as everyone thinks. And if you think if a term gets a hundred searches per month, if, if you're thinking a hundred people actually search it per month, you're wrong. Like probably a hundred percent of the time you're wrong. So. Yeah. Don't forget about the long tail that these tools can't, you know, if someone types in something, there's spelling errors, there's weird ways to say something that you haven't taken account for, which leads me to the other thing that you were talking about, kind of cast a large net, go after different keywords, throw it on your site, and you'll probably be shocked at what ends up ranking and some pleasant surprises. Yes. Now we are coming up towards the end. There are an endless number of tools, but Rob, do you have one other, maybe a free tool to throw in here? Two free ones. SEO Quake is a free browser add-on. It can be used for so many different things, but what I do is I check keyword densities. If you just hit the little add-on, it can show you what percent. You just want to make sure that you know you don't say a keyword way too much. Just kind of check out your competition and see how that's going. The other one is LSI Graph. Have you heard of that one? No, no, I don't know that one. So you type in your keywords. So for example, if you were writing an article about like Microsoft, an LSI keyword would be Windows. So it helps you find not necessarily keywords with search volume, but keywords that should appear in your article if you're considered a master on the topic. Gotcha. So it tells you a bunch of synonyms that you should include on your page. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, that's one I didn't even know was out there. Well, awesome, Rob. Thanks for sharing the tools that you like. And we'll put links to all that stuff below. And question of the day is, what tools do you like for SEO? Just let us know in the comments. Again, we want to learn about other tools too. I just learned about this LSI graph that wasn't out there or wasn't on my radar at all before. So thanks, Rob. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thanks a lot for watching. Rob and I appreciate it. And let us know in the comments what SEO tools you like. Be sure to check out the comments because some of the best suggestions do come from the audience. Thank you.